So I just want you to remember that average is the enemy, success is your responsibility, and change can take place in an instant if you are willing to flip the switch. I'm gonna give you two things that can change your life. It's two scriptures that changed my entire life. It's very simple. What I'm finna tell you, if you apply it right now, can change your existence. Because everybody I know want to be happy, everybody I know want to be successful. So now here, there is a scripture that I'm gonna give you. It's a very small scripture, it's very short. This scripture changed my life. You have not, cause you ask not. It's such a simple scripture. But it's in your Bible. It ain't just in rich people's Bible. It's in the same copy you got. You have not, cause you ask not. This is the truest statement you'll hear me say today. Cause it's true. Most people don't have the life of their dreams cause you don't ask God. Everybody has a turn back moment. You have a moment where you can go forward or you can give up. But the thing you have to keep in mind before you give up is that if you give up, the guarantee is it will never happen. That's the guarantee of quitting, that it will never happen no way under the sun. The only way the possibility remains that it can happen is if you never give up no matter what. I didn't go deep into the dungeon of my soul to say, okay, what is making you a quitter? What is making you a weak man? What is making you afraid? And so that's why I kept on quitting and going back to start or not knowing how to get through hard times. And that's why I was telling people, I'm not a theorist. I didn't study a fucking book. I literally put myself in a fire repeatedly like a sword. You put a sword in a fire repeatedly and repeatedly. If, if you keep on doing that, you're going to get a nice sword. And then you keep on beating it. You got to beat the shit out of it. <laughs> and that's what I am. Yeah. I, I became that, I, I, I said, okay, we, we can't quit. We got to figure out why you are this pussy. Why are you this pussy, man? What is wrong with you? What's going on here? So I kept on putting the sword back in the daggone fire and I just beat it harder. And I beat it harder. Before I knew it, I started realizing, hmm, all right, man. The brain is starting to get hard. When you are feeling guilt, shame, anxiety, depression, it's usually because you are living incongruently with the man that you want to be until it finally, for me, led into a massive panic attack. I'm being very transparent and honest with you guys because if you're like, well, I think I suffer from depression and anxiety. Listen, I understand depression's real, but I bet probably 2% of you out there have real clinical depression. The rest of you are living incongruently with the man that you want to be, just like I was, and therefore, your conscience is reminding you that you want to be 2.0. You tell yourself that you're gonna live a better life, you're gonna be vice-free, that you're going to focus on your nutrition and your diet, and you're gonna focus on your family and your and your mindset, but you don't, and you give into the pleasures and the desires of life, and you ignore your duty and your purpose, and as a byproduct, you begin to suffer in silence. And you know that most men live lives of quiet desperation. If you want to know something about yourself, sit on your bed one night and say to yourself, you got to mean this, like you got to be desperate. This is no game, this. It's like, my life is not everything I want it to be. And perhaps it's not everything that I need it to be. And by need, I mean my life is so unbearable that the suffering that's attendant upon that is make me nihilistic, cynical, bitter, resentful, homicidal, genocidal, unable to have a good relationship, prone to punish people for their virtues because of my jealousy, driving the proclivity to see evil everywhere except within my own heart. Like, these are problems, man. And you ask yourself, you sit on the bed and say, okay, man, I'm ready to earn something. Like, what, what's one thing I'm doing wrong that I know I'm doing wrong that I could fix that I would fix? You meditate on that, you'll get an answer. And it won't be one you want. Find something. Find a thing that you genuinely enjoy because 
getting good at things you genuinely enjoy is extremely beneficial for young people because it lets you know that everybody thinks they're a loser. Every young person thinks they're a loser, at least a young person in the situation I was at. I, I didn't know I wasn't a loser until I started winning, until I started doing martial arts. Martial arts taught me that like, I could get better at stuff, that it wasn't really a loser. I just was someone who was like in a fucked up situation. But you could channel all that energy that you have as a young person into something and get better at it. And then all of a sudden people admired me. I was like, this is crazy. So I went from being someone who was incredibly insecure and basically a failure to someone who is really successful. But to me, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And so many people are focused on success still, which to me is like, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's like success is getting what you want. Fulfillment is living what you're made for. Fulfillment and success, they're not even the same universe. And there's nothing wrong with going for success, but you, you really got to figure out what you're made for. And nobody knows in the beginning. So you start where you are and you do what's in front of you, you do what's next, and you keep growing until you start to discover Hey, this is my real passion. This is my real hunger and drive. The version of you that you are right now is why you have what you have. You got to make a complete identity switch to get something different. And so what happens is when people aren't ready to do that, they will all go, always go back to the low-hanging fruit that they're accustomed to. Mm. Because your presence will require something different. Michael Jordan told me after they swept us, before you succeed, you must first learn to fail. And I just got tired of failing. So one time we got swept by the Spurs and I went in the bathroom and I ripped up all the toilets, all the urinals, there was shit flying everywhere. And Jerry West came in there and he grabbed me. And he was strong as hell too. And he put me up against the air, calm down. I said, I'm tired of losing. He's like, you gonna get it done? I went to the finals eight times in a row before I won and lost. And like, my soul just left my body. I was like, what? I'm like, hold on, say that again? I was like, yeah, I went there eight times. You know, we could never beat the Celtics, so I didn't feel as bad, but I still had that hunger. I was like, okay, not only am I going to do it for me, I'm going to do it for you too, Mr. West. Your past is not your future. It's not. But each time you go talking about your past and what went wrong and why you're this way, you just reinforce the past to become your future. So please hear me as I tell you this. Your past is not your future. You can heal. You can get past your traumas. You can fall back in love with the person that you are. You can inspire, you can influence, you can make more money. You can have greater meaning. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be addicted. You don't have to have the vices, but you do have to do the work. And when you do, you will take that pen back and start rewriting the next version of yourself. You get to decide, no one else. And I hate using the word happy because it really doesn't describe what I am, right? It's like, um, Happiness is peace, it's not pleasure, right? And everybody thinks happiness is trying to get as much pleasure as you can get. There is nothing more agitating to your mind than extreme pleasure, <laughs> right? It's like, and it's like you just come into that beautiful state of needlessness where you realize you really don't need nothing, you know? The price of regret is much heavier than the price of discipline. You never want to wake up one day, one week, one month, one year down the road and go, Shh, man, I wish I would have listened to my gut. I wish I would have done this thing. You don't want to live in regret. If there's something you want to get done in work, your relationships, school, whatever it is, do it.